Hello. Guess what's at three thirty, baby? What's at three thirty? GME. Whoa! Oh. GME's at three thirty, so we should sell. We should get out. No! No! To the moon, motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> okay. Oh! Oh! Di- diamond hands! What if it ran up to ten thousand today and then dropped back to forty tomorrow? <laughs> Would we sell at ten thousand? Yes. We fucking paper-handed bitch! <laughs> <laughs> to the moon! Bye. All right. Bye. Love you. Last week, I released my video about the DJI FPV drone, and it has been one of the fastest growing videos I ever released on my channel. Over 165,000 views in just about a week, uh, 900 new subscribers. And I put so much work into that video that when it released and it blew up, I thought, you know what? I'm just going to take a breather. And in fact, I did. I've, I haven't really posted. I've been doing my live streams, but I actually have been working on some other stuff offline, not posting videos. It's been great. But it's time to get back nose to the grindstone. And what better video for all those new subscribers to see what my channel's all about than a little listicle about Betaflight Configurator. A listicle is one of those videos where the YouTuber says, 10 tips about Betaflight Configurator that you didn't know existed. I've been wanting to make this video for weeks and it's just never been like, I always had more important stuff to do, but today is the day. You're gonna learn 10, what do you mean we don't have 10? We couldn't come up with 10, six things about Betaflight Configurator that you might not, I'll bet at least a few of them you didn't know existed. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. And the first one is the one that you're looking at right now, which is how to put Betaflight Configurator into dark mode. That's right. Many people like dark mode for their apps. You can go up into this gear icon. And in fact, we're going to see this gear icon a lot throughout the course of this video. Many people don't know that this even exists. One of the things you can do is you can enable dark theme. You can have it on, you can have it off, or you can have it in auto mode, which I guess like based on what time of day it is, it switches. I have no idea, but a lot of people are going to want to turn that on and then you have dark mode and that's pretty slick. Every so often, people email me saying that Betaflight has been switched to another language and they don't know how to get it back into their native language. So, for example, here we've got Betaflight and it's in uh, Magyar. I, and I don't speak Magyar and I don't read it. And the challenge is like, where is the menu option to change the language? And it turns out it's not a menu option. It's right here. This right here is the list of languages that Betaflight supports and each of those languages is actually a clickable link that changes the language that Betaflight Configurator is in. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go down there and you're gonna find, here we go, English. There we go. Now we're in English. And actually you might wanna just change it to system default or you can pick any language here. Just click that link, it's right there on the very first page and it will let you change the language. In order to show you some of the next options, I'm gonna plug in a flight controller. And when I do that, we should see a new COM port appear here in the upper right. Any minute now, there it is. Uh, and then the next thing you would usually do is hit the connect button. But there's an option here, auto connect. And what that'll do is when you plug in and the new COM port appears, it'll automatically connect. There we go. Now, some people like to have this turned on because like if you are going through your configuration and you make some changes and those changes require a reboot, when you do save and reboot, it'll just automatically come right back to where you were. But in some cases, you might want to have it off because like if you're trying to flash the flight controller or something, it you might not want it to auto connect again. You might want to just back out and having to connect and then you'd have to dis hit disconnect could be annoying, but it's nice to know it's there and it is an option. Next, let's talk about some error messages that the Betaflight Configurator shows you that you probably can ignore, but people get freaked out about them. And I just want you to know you can probably ignore them. And one of them is, I'm not actually sure how I can generate this message. So let's just unplug the flight controller and we'll get the message here failed to close serial port. Now, in my case, that message was generated because I unplugged it. They were in communication. I basically just yanked the line right out of the wall and it disconnected. Uh, kids, phones used to plug into the wall of your house 
And then if you wanted to terminate it, you could just rip the line right out of the wall and the phone call would be terminated. Nowadays, phones don't. So failed to close serial port could indicate that there was some kind of a, like your USB port got ripped out, but you'll sometimes see failed to close serial port during normal operation. And basically what happens sometimes is the flight controller reboots itself. The computer didn't get a chance to close the serial port and the computer's like, whoa, hey, don't be so quick, buddy. But you can just ignore it. It doesn't mean anything. It is not a problem. It can essentially always be ignored. The next error message that freaks people out that you can almost certainly just ignore is this one. No data flash chip found. And people freak out because they think, well, there's no, there's no data flash. Shouldn't I have, don't I want one? Is my flight controller damaged or something? No, not all flight controllers have a data flash chip. The data flash chip is used to store black box data, black box logs. That's just like, like the black box in an airplane. You can store information about the flight controller and you can use it for PID tuning and troubleshooting and so forth. And you can access all that information from the black box tab over here. But some flight controllers store their black box information. Like this is the JBF7. And I don't know if you can see here, but it has an SD card slot. Well, if you're storing your black box information on an SD card, you don't need the data flash chip. The data flash chip is smaller and it's integrated on the flight controller. So you don't need to like get an SD card, but it doesn't hold nearly as much data. The only time you would ever care about no data flash chip found would be if you knew for a fact that your flight controller was supposed to have a data flash chip and then it wasn't there. And like, where did it go? But most play controllers, if you see that message, just means they don't have one and they don't need one and they're not supposed to have one. Well, speaking of black box logging, here's another thing you don't have to worry about. If you are using an SD card for your black box logging, you may put in like, this is a 16 gig SD card. And you go and you look at your black box uh, tab in Betaflight and it says free space for logs, four gig. But I guarantee you, this is an empty SD card. I just formatted this. There is nothing on this card. So I plugged in a 16 gig card and I'm only getting four gig. What's using the other 10 gig of unavailable space? Okay, the first thing to know is that Betaflight will use all 16 gig of space on that card, but it can only access four gig at a time. And what that means is that each, I think it's each time you start a new log, it starts a new four gig, or maybe it's each time you power cycle, it starts a new four gig and it can only record up to four gig at a time. So then if it were to record four gig, it would stop. And then the next time you power cycle, it would have another four gig that it could record. But here's why that is so not a problem because black box logging just doesn't use that much data. A typical black box log is a few thousand bytes, a few like one to five KB, maybe 10 or 11 KB. You could literally record for weeks at a time of just weeks of continuous data logging and not fill up a four gig or a 16 gig or a 32 gig card or whatever. So don't freak out. You will use the whole SD card if you were to record for long enough, but you're not gonna record for long enough for that to ever matter. One more little tip here, Betaflight can only access up to 32 gig cards for whatever reason, like the library that they use. I'm pretty sure many flight, many, if not all flight controllers only can access up to 32 gig cards. If you try and use a larger card, and it's, I think it's because they can only work with the FAT, the FAT uh, file system and larger than 32 gig requires a different file system. So if you're trying to use a, a bigger card and it's not working, that's why we'll free tip free there. Where is my fail safe tab? Where is my GPS tab? Where are there are tabs missing here? If you've been using Betaflight for more than even a little bit of time, you probably already know this one, but in case you're new here, you need to go up to the gear icon and you need to enable expert mode. And in fact, what I suggest you do is permanently enable expert mode and that will give you back those tabs. Have you flashed firmware using Betaflight configurator before? Sure you have but there's an aspect of firmware flashing you may not have known about. If we go to the firmware flashing and we enable show unstable releases, we get access to a whole bunch of other uh, sort of branches of Betaflight that you might want to use sometime. And the first one to be aware of is releases and release candidates. As Betaflight gets close to releasing a new version, they'll start putting out release candidates. Uh, and these are 
the, maybe they're stable, but they might have a bug in them and they put them out there for people to test just to be sure that they're going to be stable. Now, at the moment, there are no release candidates, uh, but you can see here were the release candidates for Betaflight 4.2. And as Betaflight 4.3 gets close to release, you'll start seeing some release candidates there. And you, if you want to sort of live on the edge a little bit and test them out, you can. You can also find development releases here. And these are the nightly builds created by the devs for themselves. These are absolutely potentially unstable. You definitely should not just screw around flashing these. They may have game banking bugs in them. But if you, uh, you, if you feel like you want to use one for some reason, like there's some feature that's in the nightly build that you want to try out and you're willing to accept the risk and know how to safely do that, you can find the nightly builds here. And we can see, like, here's the nightly build from last night, 25.02.21. No, that's not last night, but February 25th, that was a long time ago. Well, anyway, these USB rescue maintenance builds, what these do is they put... Um, MSP, the MSP protocol is enabled on, I think it's UART 1. And these are for if you have ripped your USB port off of your flight controller. You can actually flash the flight controller through one of the UARTs uh, using an FTDI adapter. And if you do that, then the question is, well, how do you configure it? because you, the MSP protocol is usually on the USB port only. Um, if you flash one of these builds using an FTDI adapter, then you can also configure using the same FTDI adapter and you just lose one UART. That's kind of cool. Oh, I just realized that in addition to show unstable releases, you also have to enable expert mode to get all of those. Uh, mine was already enabled, so I didn't. that's why I didn't show it earlier. I want to close out the video with some tips for the CLI. Most of what you need to get done in Betaflight, you get done through the graphical interface. Every so often, you got to go here to the command line interface and type stuff in. And the first thing I want to show you is that if you're not sure what the name of a parameter is, you can type a partial match and it will find all the things that match it. So for example, uh, I want to change that option that has to do with the GPS. Uh, what is it? We'll just type get GPS. And the first thing you see here is this is Betaflight's autocomplete. And it's showing you all of the things that start with the word GPS. And that's fine. I may find what I want there. But if I just type get GPS and hit enter, I'll see a list of all parameters that contain the phrase GPS. And I may be able to go through there and find, oh, this is the one I was concerned with. Okay. Also notice that for each of these, it shows the allowed range of values and the default value. So if you're ever trying to put something back to defaults and you don't want to just default the whole flight controller, you can just type get and the parameter name and see what the default value is in that version of Betaflight. By the way, if you do want to default your whole flight controller, you don't need to reflash it. You can just type the word defaults. It'll default the whole flight controller and save you a step. Here's another tip for working in the CLI. And if you've ever worked in any kind of IT equipment, you know that the up arrow on your keyboard scrolls back through your command history, but many people working with Betaflight maybe don't have that background. So let's say I'm going to set up, I don't know, I'm just typing in some commands, like maybe I'm typing in my aux modes. And so you wouldn't do this by the CLI. This is just an example. But let's say I type aux 0, 1, 2, 900, 900, 0, 0. Okay, and now I'm gonna do aux one and aux two and aux three. Instead of typing all that out, I can just press the up arrow and it will fill in the last thing that I typed. And now I'm gonna press the left arrow and I'm just gonna change this aux one, up arrow, left arrow, aux two, up arrow, left arrow. And see, I can change this however I need, but I don't need to type in uh, every command individually. And by the way, I can keep doing that. If I keep pressing the up arrow a few times, I'll go back through the commands and I can press the down arrow to go forward. So I can just step through all the commands that I've previously typed and easily modify them. And so it's a nice little trick. And that's going to bring us to the end of the video. I hope that at least one and hopefully a bunch of these tricks were new to you, maybe cleared up some questions or things you've been wondering about, or maybe saved you from worrying about some of those error messages in the future if you haven't run into them yet. If you want to learn more about Betaflight, Betaflight Configurator, Betaflight uh, Troubleshooting, and so forth, I've got a link uh, down in the video description to my Betaflight playlist with all of my Betaflight tutorial videos, and I certainly hope you check those out. That's going to do it for this one, though. Thanks so much for watching. Happy flying. What are you doing in here? 
The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or like just here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.